the name Sasso came up, and that's believe it or not that that's my grandmother great grandmother's maiden name. Okay, it's my middle name. I'm the third. My son's the fourth. It's a family name. Okay. Uh-huh. But the thing about it is it has a lot of meaning to it. It means rock or foundation. So all of those things kind of hit the point. I didn't want anything to do with me, though. I didn't want a name that was attached to anything. The team loved it. It's unique, and and it's short. It fits all the the, the, checks, all the boxes, including I can own it, you know, copyrights, um, trademark, uh, no issues. And and so we made that uh, directional change in 2017, and and it's been one of the best things we did. You know, it identifies us, and, you know, we're, we're rolling along. like to thank our title sponsor, B1 Bank. B1 Bank knows that entrepreneurs like you are always thinking one step ahead. So you need banking solutions that can keep up. It begins with lending. Does your business need working capital or financing for new equipment? How about a real estate or a construction loan? Good news, the B1 Lending Team is ready to learn your goals and help you find the best lending option available. Now let's talk about uncomplicating your daily cash flow. B1 offers a full array of treasury management services that let you collect funds faster, pay funds more efficiently, and access your information with powerful online tools. Most importantly, B1 understands the value of working with local nonprofits to build a stronger community. They believe in giving back through hands-on involvement with their B1 community outreach program because it's simply the right thing to do. B1 Bank. Be uncomplicated. To learn more, visit B1Bank.com. Equal housing lender, member FDIC. Hello, I'm Andrew McClendon, your host of the Next Entrepreneur Podcast. We're here today in the Propel Production Podcast Studio in Baton Rouge, and we welcome our guest, Mr. Stan Levy, founder, president, and CEO of Sasso, a branding and advertising firm founded here in Baton Rouge. Welcome to the podcast, Dan. Thanks so much for having me, Andrew. Appreciate it. I really loved uh, doing the research on you guys and particularly your website, which is just spectacular. Thank you. And it just showcases the work that you guys do as well as you could ever (laughs) hope for. So congrats on that. It's really, really well done. Thank you. Uh, So you've grown your business a lot uh, over the last number of years. You have multiple office locations. Where are are you now? Yeah, so Baton Rouge is our headquarters, and we've recently expanded. We have a presence in Atlanta, uh, New Orleans, San Diego, and Austin. I always struggle when I uh, think about firms like yours that work in the space that you do in defining them. Right, right. Are they an advertising firm, a marketing firm, a branding, a graphic design, a social media management? And uh, I thought it would be good to kind of walk through what it is that Sasso does. You call yourself a branding and advertising firm right. on, on your website, and but it seems like you really do it all. Yeah. So I thought we would, I, I would ask you just to kind of a 30,000 sure. foot kind of walk through the different things that you do. And I think, I yeah. think it starts with strategy, right? Yeah. And, and that's right. And look, there's a lot of blurred lines in, in today's form of communications and, you know, it's advertising it's social. It's all these, it's all these different marketing, you know, esque type of things, you know, for yeah. us as an agency and look, we had to evolve over time. Right. Sure. Sure. Um, but you know, the core of what we do is really, you know, we, we look at people's brands and really figure out, you know, how do you want to grow? What's the challenges, you know, what keeps you up at night? And we're fortunate, you know, with the team we've built and, and everything else, we really do offer a variety of services and it really all does start with the strategy strategy and the strategic approach, you know, right. what's the challenge, where are we trying to take things, but really, you know, we start with the brand, you know, branding, so it could be from a startup to, you know, a hundred year old company looking to evolve, advertising, digital, social media, PR, just overall marketing, you know, type of approach and communications, and obviously we have a great, you know, creative team and media placement, do a lot of media for a lot of clients, and, and websites, and, and the whole piece that comes with websites and, and, and the crazy app world and everything else, we have our hands in a lot of that. Yeah, it's interesting. If your website's the last on your list right uh, now, but there was a time where it would have been, you know, near the top, yeah. third or fourth. Yeah. And uh, as important as they are, there's all these other 
transformative sure. means of uh, communicating that have happened. Yeah. And, and the pace is just... <laughs> is rapid you know I it mean, is it's fascinating yeah it, it really is fascinating a challenging business to stay on top of it all but it's also challenging from the perspective of the client mm -hmm. you know if you have a, a business owner who's you know been very successful right. in doing what they're right. doing but they've had their nose to the grindstone right. they look up and you know before they know it things have changed oh, yeah. and they realize they have to get into yeah. the new way of communicating yeah. And it can be overwhelming. You're you're 100 percent right. I mean, the way the technology space affects everything, right? Everything that we do, you know, yeah. especially obviously in the the marketing and advertising communications world, you know, it, it's it's a constant, you know, daily, you know, evolvement of, uh, you know, what's new, what's 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 really also what's data showing, right? So we're very yeah. data driven, yeah. and the great thing now is that there's so many things that are attached to how we can track, you know, what is the performance, yeah. what is the yeah. ROI. I mean. All those things are, are so exciting, but it, it's challenging. That's why you have yeah. to have a, a lot of smart minds <laughs> touching things, you know, yeah. on a daily basis to make sure, you know, you're heading in the right direction. Well, I was really intrigued with that, talking about smart minds. I, was, I go back to the business owner who's trying to learn, um, you know, how do I get into this now? Right. Where do I get in? Right. You know, and there's so many different platforms. Right. And, and then you think of what you, what you just said about the smart minds and how many people involved. Just looking on your website. Mm -hmm. And looking at the career opportunities, yeah. right? The positions right. that you're trying to fill right, right. now across <laughs> your locations. Right. It, it really was fascinating. You've got a creative copywriter right. a position opening, digital marketing specialist, yeah. an account manager, a content manager, a front-end developer, a social media manager, a content specialist, a media buyer, a public relations specialist and a brand strategist. It's yeah. so, lot. It's so much going on there, and I'm like, you know, you know, for the for the poor business owner who's sitting there trying to figure out has no idea the level right. of complexity right. that's going on behind the scenes right. to execute on those strategies. You're right. right, you're right, and I mean, you know, we're obviously we're in a growth mode, um, and and we always are looking for great people. And it really takes a full team approach to do it right. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can always kind of wing it yeah. and I've got a person or it can do two people, or three things. Exactly. Like, I mean, it's so many different skill sets, you know, right. your writer can't necessarily design or your design uh, person can't necessarily place media right. because right. our hands are in to so many different things to help clients with in terms of the services we offer. You know, it, it takes a full team. For sure. Yeah. It's, it's fascinating when you consider, what all is involved to right. do it right. right but look i want to dial it back and yeah. you grew up here in louisiana in deritter and deritter yep. yeah yep. and what was life like that for a yeah. young stan <laughs> well uh you know deritter small town right. south, southwest louisiana very fortunate um you know my mom and dad great upbringing my mom was a teacher right. my dad was a basketball coach and later a principal so obviously you know education athletics were always an important you know, foundation for me and yeah, did y'all all go to the same school we did we wow. did so deritter had uh one real school system i mean went to deritter high school and, and, Got it. um yeah and uh two Two younger brothers, and um, hey, we were involved in a lot of things, and you know, it's a great, great place to grow up. Good student, uh, yeah, I guess. Yeah. You know, I, I could always been better, but no, I was, I was, a, I was a good student and uh, handled my business. Good athlete. Yeah, of course I was. Right? Yeah. What, what am I supposed to say yeah, on that one? Yeah. So yeah. your dad was a basketball coach. He was a basketball coach. Was that your thing? That was my thing. That was yeah. my thing. And um, I've got uh, four four kids, uh, two boys, two girls. And, you know, they've all gravitated without me pushing, but that's all their thing as well. Oh, that's cool. So were you entrepreneurial as a kid? You know, in looking back on things, you know, I very much was. I didn't realize it at the time, yeah. but um, I was fortunate. I had experiences within um, student council, okay, in high school. Right. And I was on this big national board, and I traveled to all these places. And, really? you know, I was involved in all these things. And in looking back, you know, that had a very much entrepreneurial piece to it that I was involved with. And I think that was part of the roots um, for sure. Yeah. So can you remember how old you were when branding kind of came to your recognition? Yeah. You know, I've always been very intrigued by, you know, it's, it's movies and it's commercials and it's TV and, and all those things. And even, even radio, you know, growing up, that was all things, you know, I consumed a lot of, or I was just, you know, on the radar with. And I think, you know, as I got into college and looking at, 
maybe the things I didn't want to do and started looking at the things I was interested in. It gravitated more and more. I went to LSU and went to MassCom and, you know, really started getting to exposed to some things. And, and that just kind of became became my thing and my passion and my love. And it, and it still is today. Yeah, I can see that. You're in Derrida till you came to, to Baton Rouge. Yes. You got LSU. Yep. 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 So what did you do when you got out of college? I spent some time in L.A. Um, I was at Ticketmaster at first and then DreamWorks. And it was a great experience, great exposure very early on. Ticketmaster was going through kind of the dot-com switch over and, you know, things being sold, you know, tickets on, on that method. That, so you just you just packed up and headed out there? Well, it was kind of a, a transition, you know, still some in school and, you know, kind of a point with, with graduation and everything. And, and really at that time, my, my wife now, girlfriend at the time, Kim, who, who's just, you know, the best thing in the world, been so supportive. She was still behind a little bit at LSU. So rather than me continuing to kind of be out there, I was like, hey, let me see what opportunities are at home because we're going to get married soon and started looking at, you know, agencies and media companies and, and all that good stuff and then came and, and really established here in Baton Rouge. I mean, those are two pretty big name companies, Ticketmaster, DreamWorks. When, did you learn anything particular about big time business with those Company. You weren't with them that long. No, right? no. It was kind of a transitional um, student job paid uh, kind of scenario where I was able to go in and really, you know, it was the best because I really got to see everything from, you know, senior level type of management on down and really operationally how these companies work and, and you know, the PR side and the promotional side and um, the marketing side. And so lots of exposure was covering concerts, was going to movie premieres. I mean, I experienced a lot at a very young age that really, I think, helped to set my course in terms of, wow, this is, this is, this That's is good awesome. Stuff, yeah, man. it's good stuff. Absolutely. That's so very cool. Yeah. Yeah. But you worked for iHeart Media for a, a long right, time, right? Right. So when How'd I you get into that gig. Yeah. So when I was looking at, you know, the different Louisiana opportunities, you know, Baton Rouge, New Orleans and and, and so on, really iHeart, which actually was a great place in terms of growth because, you know, it wasn't even iHeart at the time. It went through several acquisitions and, and mergers. So, so what, what is iHeart? I don't really understand yeah, it. Yeah, so iHeart is um, it's the largest audio radio company, you know, in the world. Lots and lots of radio stations. That so it's was a roll-up of a lot of radio stations? roll-up of a lot of radio stations. That was the core. Now, back then when I was there, they also had TV stations. They had an outdoor division. While I was there, you know, really kind of saw the involvement in terms of digital piece start to happen. And I, that was really one of the things that really probably, you know, again, not just right now, but, you know, when it happened, really drove the impetus of why I wanted to start my own agency. I'll still remember to this day, they came out and iHeart purchased a, a company called Thumbplay for like $40 million. And it was the technology that became the iHeart Radio app. And I was very fortunate when I was at iHeart, you know, I was working on a lot of national things. I was working on different things within our corporate division in terms of different vertical categories and different things. And this Thumbplay thing was something we were reviewing and all of a sudden they bought it and you saw, wow, look at this shift that's happening with digital. And all along that way, clients were very much um, kind of lost in the sea of social was hitting and digital was hitting. And, you know, I was right in the thick of all that. The play there is that you just have your radio on your phone. Yes, uh, right. Through an app. Right, when, exactly. Again, a lot of transformation going on, yeah. even, even at that time. It's yeah. never stopped since right. then. But what was it that you were there a long time? Sure, uh, nearly 12 a years. Decade. Yeah, yeah, 12 years. Yeah. What was it that made you say, hey, I'm ready to go out on my own? Yeah, it really was that client feedback, you know. I worked with a lot of people, worked with a lot of agencies, and I just saw the interaction. I just felt like there was a, a disconnect between, you know, clients and brands and the agency side and the media side. And then on top of that, as this digital and social shift was hitting, I just felt like I could serve a greater good and really help line, uh, clients, you know, on a much different level. And you only know what you know, right? So you kind of make the plunge. I was had a successful career there and, you know, it was was – Everything was was great, but it was like, okay, you know what? I'm ready. I'm ready to make this jump. And I think again, part of that that entrepreneurial spirit was yeah. always eating at me of looking to kind of do something, yeah. call my own shots, really do something my own way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, you know, I always think back at that time, the Great Recession and the impact that it had on so many industries, but yours uh, yeah. in this case. And what we saw is this real contraction in you know, advertising and print yeah. print media. We saw newspapers, you know, fold. We saw magazines 
disappear. And then once, you know, the light started to shine again, I noticed that as companies got back into the market telling their story, they were venturing into social. It was just that perfect timing. At least that's how I kind of view the situation from my perspective. And you could get into social affordably and, 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 you know, you're, if you're creating your own content, it might not be that great. And it was kind of free-ish right, at, at right. that point. But, and then it just continued to grow from there. So, yeah. you know, if you look at 08 recession and by the time things started to come uh, back around, right. it, it seems like that's a perfect time because you started Fuse, mm-hmm. right, right, in right. 2011? Right. That's right. That's right. So started Fuse, uh, really more focused on the digital social piece of things. And then along the way, you know, clients, as we're working with them on that, hey, you know, you understand, you know, brands, you've done creative, help me with my creative, you've done media placement, help me with my media placement, you know, and it just kind of grew from there. So your initial services that you provided was was on the social front? Yes. Yep. But you've grown into, or you quickly grew into branding. I guess that was at the root of of the social part as well. I guess that laces through everything that you do. It really does. I mean, you know, when you talk about somebody's brand, I mean, that's the connective thread really through everything. So if you don't have your brand right, then if you're driving social, you're spending a lot of money on, you know, whatever type of medium, you know, it, it might not be as effective as it needs to be. So we're really honed in on, okay, the the real brand first type of approach. And that's really, you know, one of the things we've been able to hang our hat on. You know, it's, it's, I'm a branding guy. Yeah. Uh, I'm a serial entrepreneur of a, a number of companies. Right. They could all be lumped together. Right. But I like branding them uh, individually telling that story. They're all very different stories, right? right? So I have a great appreciation for branding and, and I love doing it. I love that yeah, process. You like going through the process. Yeah, right? I love it. Uh, but I also know and can identify the difference between a good brand and a great brand. Yeah, yeah. And I just, you know, was thinking that for you and your job, that opportunity to nail a great brand and the impact that that has on a business and yeah. there must be very gratifying. It, it really is. I mean, that's one of the, the things that really drives us is really being able to help and, and, and make that transformation. Or, you know, here's this just idea. We love it so many times. There's been, you know, clients that have come to us, I've got this idea and that's right. really, it's a blank slate, right? you know, or, you know, here's the, you know, successful business that's been around, that's really either evolve or just totally transform. And how do you really take them from this space to, you know, where they want to go? So all those things are, are yeah, really the strategy, gratifying. like yeah. say, not just the brand, but helping them nail a strategy absolutely to see that come to life. Yeah. That, I mean, I can, I know that I would be very satisfied having a job like that. It, it, it's that, fun. And, and that's what keeps us, you know, so so motivated and, and just, you know, if you enjoy what you do, all of our team really, you know, gets a gratifying piece out of that. And so it keeps it fun. It keeps it very, very much a, a forward thinking, hey, what's what's next? How can we help them with the next the next phase? It, it seems, though, that there's an art mm-hmm. in your business in working with a client who has that idea. Right. 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 And then extracting from them, okay, <laughs> what is it? Yeah. Where do you want to go with this? And then blending in over time your ideas of right. where, because there's, there's, there's people right. that, that know they need to change. Mm-hmm. They just don't know how or right. what, or what, how do y'all, what's y'all's uh, <laughs> trick on that? The trick on that. Well, I think from a philosophical standpoint, okay, we're always very much like, what does the client want? Okay. Um, if we're doing great work, but the client doesn't feel like we're listening or we're difficult to work with, well, then you're not going to want to keep us around. So, you know, and, and vice versa, we're, we're doing everything you say, but we're not delivering a great product. Same thing. So it's really finding that balance of, you know, partnering with our clients. What's the collaborative approach? How involved do you want to be? Some clients say, I want to be super hands on. I think I know what I want, or I very much know what I want. And other clients are, Hey, you're the experts. I hired you for this run with it. So it's really being in tune with, with all those things to figure out our approach. Cause it's not a one size fits all, right? Your yeah. personality and how you like to work and develop a brand or run your business is different than, you know, this other person, this other person. Yeah, exactly. You're, you, 
the personality of the content that you develop has to right. has to blend in with 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 your client's mm-hmm. brand or at least carry it through a transformation <laughs> right. Right? right but it's not always rebranding a company you can be rebranding a product sure. or a service right. within that company right right very much so and and again depending on the type of client and you know the complexities to it and what all they offer yeah we've been brought in hey we've, we're launching this new thing right. within the company help make it you know awesome or sometimes it's i need i need the whole company revamped yeah hannes t bourgeois provides accounting services litigation support as well as tax and assurance services to companies and individuals throughout the region with offices in baton rouge denham springs new orleans and hammond their team of professionals have a wide range of specialized expertise and give personalized attention to each client they work with HTB serves all types of business structures, including corporations, private businesses, startups, individuals, and more. So call them today to learn how they can help you. Reach out to them by phone or learn more at their website, www.htbcpa.com. A little testimonial here. HTB has been my accounting firm for over 30 years and have guided my initial company from startup to expanding to numerous operating companies. HCB has provided guidance in helping us expand across the U.S., doing business in more than 30 states. Flat out, HCB has made all the difference in the world to our business. This podcast is sponsored by NAI Ladder & Bloom, Louisiana's leading commercial real estate firm, offering expertise in every discipline, including office, industrial, retail, multifamily, and corporate services. Their agents guide you through the real estate process from start to finish using a host of marketing, prospecting, and analytical technologies. As leading entrepreneurs, your valuable time and resources should align with the most trusted name in commercial real estate, NAI Ladder & Bloom. Learn how they can work for you at www.ladderbloom.com. You started Fuse in 2011? 2011. You're in it six, seven years or so, and you yourself start to consider a rebranding. What was the logic behind that? Sure. Well, it really should have taken place a few years before that, but you get so busy with client work, you you really can't focus on yourself. You know, the Fuse name was great. It served us well. There were some limitations there. There's other Fuses out there, obviously, and things like that. And for us, you know, in the business we're in, you know, you have to be unique. You have to, you know, show what are the differentiators and all of that. And, you know, really for us, it starts with a name. And so our team started going through, you know, a rebrand process, just like we would take clients through and you know we had we had a list we had a list of names and we had one not sasso that we really were kind of gravitating to and even doing designs and logos and things and the name sasso came up and that's believe it or not that that's my grandmother great grandmother's maiden name okay it's my middle name i'm the third my son's the fourth it's a family name okay But the thing about it is it has a lot of meaning to it. It means rock or foundation. So all of those things kind of hit the point. I didn't want anything to do with me, though. I didn't want a name that was attached to anything. The team loved it. It's unique and and it's short. It fits all the, 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 checks all the boxes, including I can own it, you know, copyright, um, trademark, uh, no issues. And and so we made that uh, directional change in 2017. And and it's been one of the best things we did. You know, it identifies us and, you know, we're, we're rolling along. Yeah, we, I, I spoke with a marketing guy one time, and he and he told me this tip, like that he was given this advice mm-hmm. to work for yourself first, meaning brand yourself, right, right, right. and then and then go out there. Yeah. But you you did you did have a brand fuse, sure. right? And right. and but then you grow into it, much like I I right. had a the first company I started, I had that name for. 30 years. Yeah, yeah. And I didn't like it for 20 years. Oh, gosh. <laughs> right. <laughs> you sound like us. Yeah. yeah. So right. I only changed it two years ago. Yeah. Well. You know, it, because we outgrew it yeah. after right. a number of years. Yeah. And, but you're busy 
Yeah. Building your business. You're busy and, building your business and, and doing client work. And you kind of have to make some sacrifices. So we continue to sacrifice, not focusing on our stuff. Yeah. And we finally said, okay, you know what? We want to be more national presence. We want to really have the right type of positioning. And, and you know, we need to do this. So the, the company started, Fuse started doing a select group of services. Mm-hmm. You grow, you right. expand, uh, not only in the services provided, but geographically. Right. That's that's a good indication that a, a rebranding is in order, right? Right, right. I mean, that happens to a lot of companies, exactly. And, yeah. and some don't see that, or don't right. take advantage of it, or don't invest in it. Right. I can tell you that the rebranding that I just mentioned uh-huh. uh, in in our company has been so well received. That's great. You know, so yeah. I, I I highly encourage. Yeah, and that's one of the greatest things is that when you go through a process, you know, like the rebrand with a client, as they get it out there, the type of feedback they get that they share with us, you know, oh, people really love the the rebrand, or people love, you know, that again gratifying. Oh, we did a great job. We made you know a client happy. So yeah, that's that's important. So speaking of clients, you have really amassed a very impressive list of clients. Thank you. Broadly Thank you. showcased on your website. Yeah. Walk us through some, some sure. of your uh, big name clients. Yeah. Well, you know, first of all, we're very, you know, we work across a, a lot of different industries and that's by design. You know, we don't necessarily specialize in just this one industry. Right. And I learned that long time ago, you know, as I was kind of coming up in, you know, media world and, and getting into agencies, we, we really try to have our presence in, you know, multiple categories because it just, it, it, it serves us well. It serves the clients well in terms of what we kind of bring to the table. As you kind of see on the site, I mean, it's everybody from big national brands like a Coca-Cola, you know, and, and in that category, and we do a lot of things with them to uh, be one bank, um, you know, yeah, great, yeah. great client that's really, you know, in growth mode and doing a lot of things. Title sponsor for our podcast. And- Absolutely. Mary Bird Perkins um, is another client. We we work with Drew Brees, you know, I mean, it, it really spans the gambit in terms of the types of uh, clients we work with. Yeah, when you look at, on your website, the Drew Brees yeah. connection, and it's really interesting when you start to dig into that mm-hmm. and to see the the depth and the breadth of work that you've done for his group of companies, which is ever growing right. and, and tremendously impressive. And the content, I mean, there's so much going on there. You know, there's he's a busy some, guy. Yeah. Oh my goodness. <laughs> right. He's like I say, he's an industry unto himself. That's a good, good, and, good, uh, good analogy. And I really wanted to touch on that because it's a great story of delivering a quality product for a client with that opportunity to expand across Drew Brees's instance, his family of yeah. companies. I mean, he's even got a, a you know really nice testimonial about the work that uh, Sasso has done for for his firm. So yes, we uh, we had a, a great opportunity back in I think twenty. 20- 16 or so working with walk-ons and Brandon, all the great people over there. They just brought Drew on. We, we shot uh, a lot of video content and commercials and, you know, I guess Drew was impressed by it and that, you know, he kind of came back to us, Hey, great, great work, national caliber work. And you're right here. So, you know, that led into another client uh, working with him and a, another client of, of his, you know, that he's either, you know, partner with or endorsing or, you know, owns. Um, so it's been a variety of that. So everything from a smoothie King, to Copper Compression, to Clever Made, all of his uh, F&A uh, football. The and, flag and football. Flag football and Surge, which is the, the trampoline parks. I mean, we've really, you know, done a, a lot of different things with him, you know, here over the last several years. Yeah, he is a formidable entrepreneur. Yeah. And uh, there's endorsement deals, like you mentioned, but then there's entities that he's invested and in hands-on and running. That's right. That's right. Now, you mentioned earlier in the first segment about analytics. Mm-hmm the difference or, or how that tool is used right. to guide the strategy. Right. 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 But it's really, it's really striking when you consider, you know, what you had to go by before the anal, the digital <laughs> analytics. Right. 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 And the degree of info that you can get from gender to sure. age to uh, it's and the hours of, you know, when people right. are looking at your content, the hours of the day. And right. That is really fascinating. How has that, how, how does that impact your strategy? I don't yeah. know if that's a fair question, but I mean, there's so <laughs> much going on there yeah. compared to the past. It, it really has. And I mean, it, it's just opened a, just a whole nother 
door in terms of how are we providing value to clients? Because like you said, in the past, you're doing things, you're driving, you know, some kind of reach or awareness or presence out there, but you weren't really seeing what's the the fruit of that. And, And more so from a client perspective, what is my money getting for me? So now, you know, we're so plugged in. I mean, we, we're so in depth in terms of, you know, our analytics and, and how we're measuring everything and, and really what's working, what's not working, where we're pivoting. It, it just creates a whole, really just another level of accountability, you know, for the agency, for, for you know, how we're, we're stewarding the client's dollars. And, and more so, you know, if you're looking at those KPIs, you know, what, what's hitting, you know, what's doing well, you know, where do we need to shore up things? Um, right. You know, again, it's, it's pretty it, fascinating. Yeah, it's really striking when you compare the difference. If I look back all those years ago when I started my business and, you know, you're, you're a scrappy little entrepreneur and you're trying to right. carve your way and you finally feel like you squirreled away enough money to run an ad. <laughs> right. 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 You, know, you run an ad and you think maybe, you know, the phones are going to start yeah. ringing. Yeah. Of course, uh, the ad people are saying, well, it doesn't quite work like doesn't that. Quite you need, work like you that, need to right. keep putting your name right. in front of there. Right. But you don't really, you know, necessarily ever feel a direct right. connection mm-hmm. all those years ago between, say, a print ad and yeah. a, the phone ringing. Nah. It's, it's kind of this name recognition. Whereas, right. you know, you go all these years, fast forward to yeah. today, yeah. you actually do have data. Yes. How has that helped you grow? I mean, do I guess my question is, is do your customers knowing that they have data, Mm -hmm. are they more likely to spend and grow that versus my experience from the past? Sure. It depends on how in tune they are with really what they what they have right under their nose. Right. Sometimes clients don't even realize that, wow, I've got this big customer database that, you know, they've been in business five, 10 years, 20 years, and they didn't really realize how to leverage that. So if you can make that connection for them of how to really utilize all of that and what, you know, that potentially is able to yield for them, you know, at some point, they really start to see, wow, this can be something that that really, you know, it's a, it's a whole nother channel. They might have been doing, you know, all this outbound, I'm driving, driving, driving. I didn't realize I had, you know, stuff within, you know, my own, my own house, you know, in my arsenal that I can leverage. So we really try to make that connection for the clients. And, 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 and some clients, you know, can really jump on that. They have a lot. Other ones, we might have to help them build it over time. But, you know, if you've got it, absolutely, you know, uh, use it. Yeah, content is, content's everything, right? Yeah, it is. But it's it, it's creating that content mm-hmm. that can be seen. Right. Because everyone's scrolling, <laughs> right. right? Right. And so what is it about what you do that's going to get them to stop? So you, you can't have average content. Right. Right? No, it's it's got to it's gotta stand out. And the marketplace, you know, is so cluttered. There's yeah. so many messages we're proliferated with. I mean, yeah. every second, you know, everybody's scrolling. Yeah. Um, so really, much digital noise. So yeah. much digital noise. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you have to really figure out what is that sweet spot? Who's my customer? Who's this really target audience? And I mean, you might have different levels of target audiences. And because of digital, because of, you know, social and, and all the things, you can really start to segment that out and yeah. craft up those different mag- messages that really you know, will resonate with the person within that uh, true demo, you know, that you're trying to reach. And that's one of the things kind of talking about, you know, the old way of of, of doing media and marketing versus now, you just have so many more things at your fingertips now to really drill down on who do I want to reach and and what do they really need to consume from the content side to get them, you know, engaged or taking action or whatever you're looking to do. And then that content has to be diverse enough Mm -hmm. to you know, build interest. Yes. If you were to just go out there and do the same thing right. or, you know, over and over again, yeah. people tire of that very quickly. Yeah, but if you can get that diversity. And then I always feel like if I can understand who is behind your company, mm-hmm. like who are the people there yeah. and making that connection, like, oh, yeah. okay, that looks like a, yeah. you know, normal yeah. enough looking person. I think I can do business <laughs> right, with them. Right. Well, and, and again, that's the, the change, you know, that's happened over these last, you know, several years and that people want to understand 
that brand story, who's behind that company, you know, how do I connect with those individuals? You've got all these different facets of, of people that, you know, they can be choosy now. You know, I, I don't just have one or two options. I might have 30 options within this category. And so you really have to cater to the customer, to the consumer to make sure, yes, I'm res- resonating with them and, you know, I'm in the mix, right? I'm, yeah. I'm one of the choices. Now they want to dig deeper and go, uh, go further in to see what I'm all about. Yeah, very cool. I want to talk a little bit about the expansion that you've yeah. been through recently and you've grown your operations significantly. What did that look like? How did you get to a point to say, okay, we, we, we need to get a location or a presence sure. in, in New Orleans or Austin or San Diego? Was, was that all organic? Was there some acquisition involved there? No, that's all been org- organic and it's really been, we were always in a pretty, um, not necessarily remote like we are today, but we've always been in a place where, you know, we want great people doing great work. Some of the things that we can do, it, it's collaborative and we're together. And some of the things, as people have seen, you can do some of it remotely. Right, right. And so for us, you know, between having clients in some of these areas, having employees in some of these areas that it just made for uh, sense for us to kind of expand and, and really strategically, you know, find some locations that made sense in terms of what, you know, our growth plan, you know, can, can be. So you guys are really strong in video. Is that a fair statement? Um, I guess that we do a lot of it, and it's something we love, and, and we've got a great team. And like you were saying earlier, all the content you know has moved yeah. so strong into video. We do we do a lot of it. We we think we do a good job. But I think um, you I, I think you do it. Thank I, you. The work looks looks excellent. I kind of have this theory that if a picture's worth a thousand words and a video is worth a million, <laughs> right, right? Right. How is it that? you use videos for your clients. There's, there's, you know, you can have the little short burst, sure. 15 seconds or yeah. 30 a minute or yeah. longer versions. How, what instances are you using video as it relates to the length of the product? Yeah. So um, it just depends. So, you know, for us, you know, sight, sound, motion, just like you said, it's so effective, you know, and, and, and look, every client has different needs. And obviously we do lots of different things when it comes to the video piece, though, really drilling in, is it more of a full brand story? Is it a couple minutes long type of piece that might live on their website, be pushed, you know, heavily on right. digital or social or, you know, you name it, or they're using it internally for pitch pieces or, you know, recruiting clients or recruiting employees. You know, there's a lot of things with that. How we start carving that up, though, in terms of when we're really driving it out, you know, yeah, it could be a 30-second spot. That's a broadcast, you know, TV type of spot, but it also runs, you know, on, on digital and social. It could be, you know, 15s or, or multiple different links. And the thing with a, a lot of the stuff online, you know, it doesn't have to have a true length, you know, attached to it, like broadcast, TV, you know, 15s, 30s, you know, 60s sometimes in the digital space, you know. It can be, you know, all kind of different links. So we really try to find what what is the optimum, what's the message, what's the what's the audience, you know, what are the different channels we're looking to do, and we kind of look at it that way. Yeah, I, I can remember when I, I I thought that two minutes was long, would be considered long. And to me now, it's like a minute's long. <laughs> right. right. Oh, yeah. yeah. But I look at your reel on your website showcasing mm-hmm. the diversity of your work, right. which is absolutely spectacular. And it's maybe four minutes or, or it's uh, long it's way too long we've been needing to cut it down <laughs> like I mean, you said we, we're it, busy with client stuff but it's completely engaging thank you and if someone wants to like understand mm-hmm. what sasso does yeah. i think it's a brilliant piece thank because you. i think at first you start watching it you're just drawn in and then you start seeing some familiar faces right. some familiar products and then you begin to realize like these guys are doing all of this work and some of it's behind the scenes and it's all, it's, it's, it's very well done. So I I can see you talk about having a product that lives on your website Mm -hmm. like that with, you know, with that sole purpose. And again, like you just mentioned, as far as recruiting, Mm -hmm. what better way to recruit potential employees than to show them a body of work that that's that in depth. Right. 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 Thanks. And of course, I know you could have gone a lot longer with that. Right? <laughs> no, we we've got we we've got lots of other updated work to also include. So we gotta we gotta go back to the drawing board yeah, soon yeah. on it. Yeah, that's cool. Pivotal is pleased to sponsor the next entrepreneur podcast. 
Pivotal is a commercial building contractor that performs new building construction, building maintenance, tenant improvements, renovations, and additions. Pivotal has been in business for over 25 years. The Pivotal team is simply the best. They have an impeccable safety record and they crush schedules. A focus on quality and professional communication is at the root of their success. Pivotal also performs programs for clients who build in multiple markets with current projects in Texas, Louisiana, and Mississippi. If you are looking for the perfect addition to your project team, a contractor who can deliver the results you need to succeed, Pivotal is a one. When it's critical, call Pivotal. They can be found online at PivotalPerforms.com. So, Stan, your firm, Sasso, has uh, garnered a lot of recognition in the industry over the years. I've read about some of them, but I know there's others. Tell us what that looks like and what that means to your company. Sure. Well, you know, people can always win awards, and, and we don't strive. That's not a goal of ours. It's it's a byproduct, honestly, right. Right. of uh, hopefully doing great work for clients. So we've submitted things over time, and, I mean, there's been everything from Tele Awards to Addy Awards to Davy Awards, which is recognition for the best of, quote-unquote, small agencies. Tele's are very video-driven. Addy's is just kind of the whole advertising community. We've been fortunate to, to play in a lot of those uh, races, and, and we've won a few. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. And now you recently were judging for the tellies, weren't you? Yes. I was selected as a telly judge, which was kind of a surprise. They reached out to me and um, this past year, you know, served as a telly judge, which was a really, really cool process. And I mean, look, the, the work that's out there is just amazing. All of these agencies and firms and video production companies and you name it. It's a, it's a lot of really, really awesome work and, and really getting in to really view those and, and categorize, you know, with, with the judging and the scoring and everything really cool process. Well, I, I read something, it was a staggering number, something like 12,000 yeah. videos are submitted and yeah. you're narrowing it down to these different yes. categories. Thank so, goodness I didn't have to look at all those myself yeah. or I would, I would still be at it. But yeah. Um, yeah, they batch them, you know, for each of the judges sure. and kind of serve things up. But um, it's, a, it's a big, you know, highly recognized award and, you know, lots of great work that's out there. I'm always interested in culture mm -hmm. inside a business and, and, you know, to some entrepreneurs, that's a huge, yeah. huge thing. Yeah. It, it's everything. Yeah. And to others, it's like, I uh, don't really have much time for that kind of thing. <laughs> right. Particularly in a company like yours is geographically spread out and there's a lot of remote employees. How do you, how do you define culture in your uh, shop and, and how challenging is that to keep alive? Yeah. So, you know, it really, like you said, from an entrepreneurial side, you know, it took me several years into the business to really realize and, and value, you know, what culture means. And I think the more we started working with clients and, and we're fortunate in that we see all levels of types of clients, you know, big and small and international to local. And so when you can identify the great things they're doing on a culture side and you can try to emulate some yeah, of those things, yeah. that's been an advantage to us. And, and, and we always strive to put more time and more emphasis into it. And we want to continue to, you know, grow and make it better. But you're absolutely right. And especially in this kind of remote environment that the world's living in now for, for from a certain expect, uh, aspect, you know, you're not always right next to your coworker. Right. You're not always right next to your client even. So yeah. how do you allow that communication and that shared value system to kind of really, you know, emulate throughout the company? And so it's it's something we, we're always continuing to, to try to improve and it's something that we value very much. Yeah, for sure. I mean, for some companies, you know, it's, they might define culture as, you know, well, we have a ping pong table right, now. Right. Or, or, so we're cool. <laughs> right. We're cool. Right. And that's our culture. But for others, it just runs deep. I could remember having Brandon Landry on and they pulled a card out of his wallet. Yeah. He has, it defines the culture of their business. I mean, they are driven yep. by culture and that's a really cool thing to see. Yeah. But it's easier said than done for sure. Yeah. As far as management, how would you define your management style? My management style, you know, I really love people to sort their strengths, right? So as we bring in new employees and we can find 
what they're really good at and what they have a passion for. I'm not the type to want to micromanage or be touching every aspect of the business because there are things that I'm certainly responsible for that I need to you know make sure I'm taking care of. Right. And it's a lot of trust, right? We have people that we trust that that do a great job. And look, we all make mistakes and you know, the biggest thing that we always say is, hey, if if we're taking chances or we make a mistake, you know, what are we learning from that to make sure next go around, you know, we, we, we're in a better place and we're not repeating that sort of thing. So it's a very trusting environment, you know, in, in my style. And look, I'm fortunate. We have a great, great team. You know, we've brought on um, some great people, you know, over time and, you know, have really stuck with Sasso and watched um, and been a part of the growth. You know, it's very rewarding for me in terms of watching our team grow both as, uh, as a full group as well as individuals on our team. So, you know, you allow people to find those things they're really good at and, and you, you know, try to assist and you try to encourage and you try to put all the right things in place and be the good counsel and, and help give direction. But ultimately you want them to feel ownership in it. And, yeah. and we, that's kind of my style. And what's your employee count at now? We're at 22 right now, but um, as you're talking about from the website earlier, we're, we're, we're on a hiring blitz right now yeah. looking, looking to grow. That's great. Yeah. What would you define as your strengths as a leader? Strengths as a leader, going back to kind of the whole athletics and education, everything else I'm driven, uh, Everybody will say that, you know, as a leader, but I think there is a competitive nature, you know, in terms of wanting to have the team grow, move forward. You know, that's certainly one piece. And, you know, I think the other thing is, um, you know, always being willing to learn, you know. Yeah. I'm never, you know, the type of attitude where I sit down and it's like, ah, I've got to be the smartest person in the room. Right. You want all those great minds around you. You know, you want to work with clients that, you know, you can teach them some things and you can learn a lot from them. So you're always learning. And yeah. so my biggest thing is, you know, and in, in, in reading and just consuming content and things is yeah. like every day I'm trying to pick up on new information to learn and grow, you know, myself, our team, our clients. And I think that's one of the biggest things I'm never set. You know, I'm always looking to grow and move ahead in terms of what we can offer to one another, offer to our clients. And, and that's kind of my so you philosophy. Have, you have to be creative, obviously, in, in your industry, uh, hyper creative, maybe. But I, I see where that competitiveness that you just mentioned comes into play because you're going to have clients that are going to go out to a number of companies sure. to get proposals right. to put their brand initiative right. into play. And how much do you get into that? You always want to win, right? <laughs> um, you know, anytime we're up for an opportunity to, to work with a client, when it's the right fit, obviously, you know, we're all in and it's like, hey, we need, you know, we've got this big pitch and we're putting together big presentations and everything else. Absolutely. You want to see that through and, 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 and work with them. And We've had to learn. I've had to learn over time. It doesn't always work out. You know, sometimes yeah. it's it's nothing about our agency or, or me on a personal level or, you know, uh, anything like that. You know what? They already had somebody else in mind, yeah. you know, that they had a connection with or whatever. So you learn about that along the way. And, you know, our greatest thing is, you know, when, when we get calls from a client referred us to their friend or their business associate or, or whatever, and that's very gratifying in that, wow, you know what, we did great work. We were great to work with. And, you know, they're recommending us to, to someone. And that's a lot of, again, going back to the trust piece. Yeah, for sure. The role of mentors in your life, do you rely on anyone or a number of people yeah. to help you in yeah. the growth of your business? Sure. You know, in, in terms of my wife, um, you know, most importantly has always kind of been by my side. It's a great sounding board. She doesn't get involved with the minutia of the business, but in terms of business and, and life and everything, she's always been supportive, you know, um, starting out, you know, we had lots of family stuff and kids being born and, you know, all, all these different things. And it's definitely, you know, entrepreneurs sacrifice a lot, you know, to get things moving. And even when they're moving, you're, you're still growing and everything else. My parents have always been been a, a great support over time you know there's been different business people I have um, consulted with on on different things I really take a lot of information in from a lot of different people to help shape 
okay, yeah, this is, this, this really is, is helpful. You know, there's some small groups, you know, that I've been um, involved with over the last few years of, as well that, you know, have been uh, helpful as well. How challenging is it to find talent in today's market? It's, it's certainly challenging. You know, we're very picky in terms of our process that we go through to, to hire, you know, people onto the team. So there's a lot of people out there finding the very best people. Yeah, it, it, it's certainly challenging. I mean, and look, we, we help a number of clients with recruitment efforts and stuff too. And it spans far and wide in terms of the void of, of filling the talent, you know, that talent pool, um, especially in what we do, you know, it, there are so many different specialties that we look for. We're growing, but we're being very selective in, in how we do that and who we bring on board. Yeah. When you think about what it takes to succeed in your business mm-hmm. and you look at yourself yeah. as a leader, what are those traits that you think are the top of the list of being critical to succeed? And, you know, I, I say this all the time. You've got to be able to do the daily grind. you got to put your nose down. You know, a lot of times there's no steps to skip to get to success, right? And especially as you're a new entrepreneur, hey, I'm going to hit this and do this and boom, it's going to, you know, be happening. It really takes time and energy and effort and so i think to really understand you got to put in you know every day you got to surround yourself with great people you've got to really get the value system in place like you were talking about and really find the alignment you know what are the types of clients and personalities and and different places that we can do great work for for those types so when you recognize some of those things it makes it it's never easy but you're at least on the right path so you got to do the work yeah and then it seems then that by that, you know, leading by example would be a defining management style. If, if you go in there, you're grinding, you're doing the work. Yeah. <laughs> you know, your employees are seeing that. Yeah, right? I'm, I'm often um, picked on a little bit in that it's all hours that I work, you know, because I might be tied up in meetings or I might have something, you know, personal with my kids and, man, I'm back at it. It's 10 o'clock at night and I'm finally able to jump back in, have some quiet time and get some things done. And and look, that's a philosophy, you know, I, I carry in that as long as people are doing their work and doing a great job and hitting on what they need to hit on with what we're trying to accomplish, there's flexibility there yeah. because, you know, your life and what you have coming up is different than the next person is different than mine and so on. And as long as you're delivering that, that, you know, excellence that we're trying to reach, it, everybody's schedule looks different a little bit now. We've talked with a couple of entrepreneurs who looked at the, the labor issue, you know, the, the struggle in right. finding talent. Right. And that if they couldn't get them into the office, it could be a hindrance to growth. And then others, it sounds more along with your model yeah. where they can work, work remotely mm-hmm. and maybe be in a position to help be part of an office in you know, other parts sure. of the country. Right. When you look at growth, when you look yeah. at the vision, you know, five and 10 years down yeah. the road, what do you see? And as it relates to growth mm-hmm. and expansion. Yeah. Well, you know, because of kind of this post-COVID kind of scenario where it has changed and we're very much a, a hybrid model. We have people that are in the office all the time, some of the time, mostly remote. It just opens up more possibilities. You know, it opens up a greater talent pool. You know, you're not just stuck in you know, certain markets, it opens up um, a greater pool of just like we're doing. Let's find some office space. Let's really establish some roots in some of these other markets. So I think what you're going to see is in the types of industries where there is that kind of flexibility, that will just continue to kind of to morph and grow. And then, you know, there's some types of industries. It's very much, you have to be in that facility. You have to be some kind of physical piece you're tied to. And, you know, I think we're going to learn a lot, you know, in the, in the coming years on how this continues to evolve. But just looking at the numbers and, and like you're talking about the, the, the labor piece of how many people are working remotely or from home or, or whatever the case may be. It's just, you know, it's such a high clip right now. It doesn't ever go back probably to where it used to be. Right. But how, where does that settle? It'll be interesting to see. Yeah, I wanted to wrap up final question yeah. talking about uh, the importance of 
uh, your role in the community and Sasso sure. giving back. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's huge for us. You know, both me personally, as well as our team, you know, I've been a United Way board member for about five years. Um, I just kind of wrapped up my term. We really saw firsthand impact that, you know, being on the board as well as we worked with them, you know, as a client in the transformation they right. went through and, and really helped to recalibrate a lot of the types of things they were doing. And that's again, very rewarding, very fulfilling. Um, we're a big uh, part of um, the best dress ball with American cancer society. We partnered with them about five or six years ago, and it's been again, very rewarding watching that event grow to, you know, it's been around for a long time, but the emphasis on it and, 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 and kudos to the volunteers. I mean, they have a great, great group of volunteers right. to where that's a million dollar plus event night of raising funds wow. for cancer, you know, every year now. So, um, you know, that uh, along with numerous other organizations that will donate um, services or time to, or obviously uh, financial, you know, contributions to as well. We actually have a, a big thing with the uh, American Diabetes Association we're supporting um, that's coming up as well. So, you know, we, we certainly believe in that in the community and, and always like to give back on a personal level. You know, I, I've spoke several times at LSU and Catholic High, and, you know, um, I think it's always good to, to help, you know, wherever we can. Yeah, good stuff, man. I appreciate the work yeah. you do for the community. Appreciate it. Look, it's very exciting to see a company like yours you. from Baton Rouge putting out the quality of product that you are. And to know that you're expanding, they're so energetic in that respect, uh, tremendously exciting. So I wish you the continued success and best of luck with all you do. Thanks so much. Thanks for having me. And, yeah. and keep up the, the great stuff that you're doing. Uh, this is a great outlet for entrepreneurs, and we appreciate it. Thank you, sir. All right. Very cool to talk to Stan. First time we'd ever met, and I was really impressed. Uh, with everything that they're doing here out of Baton Rouge. I think Stan's a pretty modest guy. I think at the root of his success is hard work. And, and it's no surprise that he has built his business in the way that he has across the United States. I know that he'll continue to grow. If you want to see what his company does, do yourself a favor and check out his website, uh, sasso.com. There is a lot of great content there, and it's really engaging, so it'll give you a good idea. Uh, what they do. We appreciate Stan coming in. We appreciate you guys watching and we'll catch you next time. We would like to thank our title sponsor, B1 Bank. They can be found online at b1bank.com. The Next Entrepreneur is produced by Propel Productions. You can find more information at propelyourstory.com. Don't forget to subscribe to the Next Entrepreneur podcast and hit the bell for notifications. You can also follow us on social media the links are in the description below.